Hello all, welcome to this video. Hello all, uh, welcome to this lab solution video. And in this one, we look at the insecure Docker registry two, which is part of the DevSecOps labs. So either you can go ahead and click it via Pentester Academy if it still appears in the member area. If not, you can go to attackdefense.com and then go to the DevOps sec, uh, DevSecOps section, click on Docker registry, and then go to the insecure Docker registry too. Great. So in this challenge, what we actually have is an unprotected Docker registry on the same network. And this contains a Docker image, which contains a flag. So the idea is to recover and retrieve the flag. Now, once again, uh, going ahead and simulating a pen test environment, you do not have a regular Docker client available to you. So in this case, we'll once again have to go ahead and work this via first principles and see how we can pull a Docker image, get the different layers, and then figure out how to work with it. So let's go ahead and start the lab. Now I also have my handy HTTP API v2 manual from the Docker registry of uh, Docker website available. So this is what we are going to use. Now in a previous video, I've already gone through some of the basics. So I'm not going to repeat that in this video. So let's wait for the lab to start. I know we've architected this, but I love these labs so much myself that, you know, it always makes me wonder, I wish I had this when I was learning stuff, you know, I'm not trying to market or sell, uh, just admitting what I genuinely feel. Okay, so let's go ahead and do an IP ADDR. Now, based on the challenge description, uh, the Docker registry is available on dot three. So I'm just going to do a quick nmap scan. just to verify that the Docker registry is available up and running. Now, the first thing, of course, we are going to go ahead and do is look at the list of repositories which are available to us. So this is done by slash v2 underscore catalog as we've seen in a previous video. And after that, we will look at the tags available with that repository and then pull the manifest file so that we can look at all the details of the image. And from that point on, we will go ahead and pull each of the layers. So here we go, it's confirmed that this is running a Docker registry. Now let's go ahead, use our good friend curl and go ahead to underscore catalog. So this tells us that there is just one repository as mentioned in the challenge description called treasure trove. Now let's go ahead and look at the different tags that this repository has. So that will allow us to know how many images are present. Now. If you've forgotten, you can just go back in here, scroll up, and this will actually tell you that tags slash list would give you the list of tags. So there's only one tag latest. Now the next thing we want to do is pull the manifest file for treasure trove latest. Now this will contain all the information of the different image layers and all of that stuff. So once again, we'll do this by first principles. So if you notice, this says it's slash v2, the name, which is treasure trove slash manifest slash reference here is basically a tag or digest. So we're going to use the tag. So if we go back in here, basically say manifests. And then after that, the tag was latest. So this gives us uh, a big JSON response. 
uh, now I'm not going to discuss every single section. Maybe if we do a tutorial on Docker image forensics, then we can discuss all of this. But clearly from our perspective right now, the important section is here, the FS layers or the file system layers. Now, Docker basically works by overlaying one layer over the other. So typically what would happen is this is the lowest layer and these are layers above it. So Docker would end up creating this file system layer and then overlay that with this layer. So if there are any files which the second layer is overwriting in the first layer, then they automatically, you know, go ahead, get overwritten. And similarly, after that, you have other layers as well, right? So we have three layers in this image, but actually you could have dozens of layers, maybe even theoretically hundreds of layers based on what you're doing. So the way Docker works is it creates these initial read-only layers, which are the image layers, which are picked up from the manifest. And over that, it's actually going to create this thin read light layer, which is the container layer. And this is the way by which, you know, Docker is able to keep this core image separate and pull it every single time it wants to create a container. And then it's going to create this layered approach, put a thin read write layer on top, and then allows the container to run, right? So the idea of this exercise is to actually find a hidden flag which is there within the image. Now this could mean that the flag could be there in any one of these. And actually to tell you the truth, the flag could be there in every one of this where every subsequent layer might override the flag created by the previous layer because it's really just a very simple file system overlay, right? So what we're going to do now is pull each of these layers down separately. Now don't be intimidated. These layers are nothing but a compressed file system. And we can go ahead and just use star and basically get the files from inside of it. Now, if you notice, uh, each of these layers is named, these layers names to be seems to be named in a very intimidating way. So you see SHA-256 and then colon and then this long uh, thing over here, right? So really all this is, is basically the SHA-256 checksum of the layer file, right? And here is the checksum value. And they've kind of named it in this way, probably just to make it, you know, much more easier and streamlined to download the layer and immediately verify the integrity of the layer. Uh, so as I said, nothing to be intimidated about. It's actually very simple. So the next step is now to download these layers, right? From the registry. So we can do that. If you kind of scroll here. So we have the method right here. It's a get method v2 name would be the name of the repository. And digest here, of course, is going to be the blob sum identifier, right? So let's go ahead, download a layer. So I'm just going to use curl once again. So curl dash s this time around. And actually, let's copy out this entire section all the way till here, which contains the uh, repository name. And then after that, if we go back in here, we see that we can say blobs followed by the digest. So we have blobs followed by this whole blob sum name over here. So I'm going to download the very first layer. And let's actually give it a output file name. I'm just going to call it layer one and save it. So now if we go ahead and look at this, we have layer one, which is around 2.7 megs. If you run a simple file on it, you'll actually find that this is nothing but gzip compressed data, right? So it's just a compressed file system, nothing more. Now, similarly, let's go ahead and download the other two layers as well. So I'm going to just copy this part out. Go up here. Copy out the layers. So 
So here is layer two. And then similarly, let's actually download the last layer, which is layer three. Right, it's the topmost layer. So now we can see that we have layer one, layer two, and layer three. Let's actually create a directory called image and let's move all of these into image just to make it a little bit clean. Now let's go ahead and first decompress and expand the very first layer, which was the bottom layer, right? Layer one. So I'm going to do a tar. And now if you do an LS, you'll actually see apart from the layer files, Everything else kind of goes ahead and resembles a Linux file systems root directory, right? Which is what is expected. The lowest directory is going to contain most of this stuff. Of course, depending on what kind of image it is. Uh, now let's go ahead and untar the second layer, which automatically will get overlaid on top of this. And then finally, the third layer. Okay, so now that we have the entire file system kind of laid out, we can do a very simple find dot slash name, anything with the word flag in it. And we see that here is a file, just do a cat on it. And we seem to get the flag value, which we can go in here and verify the flag. There you go, verified, fantastic. Awesome. So the, the cool thing what you've learned here currently is the fact that, you know, Docker images are layered, each of these are just file systems. And then you can go ahead and just very simple use tools like tar to, you know, uh, look into it. Now let's also do one final exercise, which is verifying these hashes. So uh, I could use SHA-256 sum. It's a built in utility on most Linux systems. Let's do layer one. Similarly, let's do layer two, then let's do layer three. And if you just compare these hashes, so let's say E7, C96, blah, blah, blah. You'd see that here it is, it matches. The second one was A3ED. Uh, that's exactly what we have here, A3ED. And then the last one starts with 2A62, which is exactly what we have here, right? So we proved the final hypothesis as well, which we had, which is this is the names are nothing but the SHA-256 uh, checksum over the file, prepended with SHA-256, uh, so that I think the receiving party can figure out uh, the hashing function being used. You know, Maybe uh, they do have plans to change the hashing function or have arbitrary hashing functions in there. I have no idea, but I think that's the reason they may have prepended the fact that this is a SHA-256 hash. Uh, Fantastic. So I hope you enjoyed this challenge. And if you have, please do recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.